Division one, Shelley Sorcival. Here. Division two, Keith Dias. Here. Division three, Frank Donato. Here. Division four, Justin Lane. Here. Division five, Robert Harris. Here. Division six, Marlon Barnes. Here. Division seven, Gary Van Dam. Here. Dwayne Chisholm. Here. Bill Bruner. Here. And Billy Hughes. Thank you. Item four, period open to the public. If anybody in the audience would like to address the board at this time uh, on any item that is not on the agenda, please feel free to do so now. Well, I guess the public should say Merry Christmas to the AVEC board and staff. Thank and you. since Dito and I are the only ones here. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Item 5A, consideration of possible action on the minutes of the board meeting of October 23rd, 2018. Um, Second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That's approved. Item 5B, consideration and possible action on the minutes of the board meeting of November 6, 2018. I'll so move. Second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One, one abstention. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Carried. Item 5C, consideration and possible action on the minutes of the board meeting of November 13, 2018. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Two. Item 6A, Finance Committee. Committee Chairman Donato, do you have a report? Yes, I do. Um, committee met last uh, Friday and uh, uh, went over all the bills and also the uh, check registry, which is uh, in your agendas. And uh, is there anything that um, uh, anything that you want to bring up? No, there's nothing in particular that's out of the order. Okay. Okay, so I'll go ahead and uh, move on board order six A one. The uh, consideration of possible action to accept the files from the check registry and list of the number uh, November 28th through December 12th. I'll say. I'll say. Any questions or discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Okay, that brings us to item uh, 82, the review. Recommendation to accept the treasury report uh, Monday ending November 30th. I move on board number 682. Second. Any further discussion or questions? I have a comment. Sure. Okay, in your um, in your agenda, um, when you look at the, the, the graphs. And also the uh, the capital assets and uh, finances. You have to really look at the staff report because they've added additional money in here that, that um, increases our uh, revenue overall for the agency. Yeah, that had to do with the uh, fact that we had six point nine million, uh, six point nine million, I think so, six point nine million dollars that uh, uh, was received December 3rd instead of November. So there's a, uh, so you see a little ad morale. Ad, 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 Any other questions or discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Okay, that concludes the uh, finance report. Thank you very much. Item 6B, Public Information Committee. Committee Chairman Lane, do you have a report? 
I do, but I'll pass it to Wayne to do it. Sure. Thank you, uh, uh, Director uh, Lane. Um, the attached is a professional service agreement with uh, Alicia, probably with the last name here, Holly. Sunshine. Sunshine. Um, and she's a, a consultant that we hired this last year to help us with uh, some of our technical writing and uh, preparing various uh, press releases and newsletters uh, for the agency. Um, her uh, contract uh, has expired, and this uh, uh, this particular contract extension would extend uh, the contract for another year. Uh, the only difference is uh, given the uh, um, the time that we've spent in the last year that uh, we're recommending that we go to a uh, monthly retainer amount of $1,500 per month, uh, not to uh, not less than 30 hours of services, and then a consultant uh, uh, could not uh, exceed over 50 hours per month or $2,500 per month without recommending the general manager or assistant general manager. <coughs> but those revisions and everything else is the same with the exception of uh, we have removed the uh, attorney's language that was in the prior uh, professional services contract and upon the advice of uh, a uh, uh, board member and our attorney. So. I don't understand that. Can you explain that? Sure. Um, Probably do. Sure. Good morning. This is something that's come up before in contracts. We had a attorney fee provision if lawsuits are filed and we had discussed that that can work in uh, in a way that hurts the agency doesn't help the agency most people that uh, we contract with uh, if we get into dispute with we're in better shape not to try to shift fees a um, good example is some of the litigation we've been involved in recently so Basically, what that provision allowed is if if we got in a dispute in this case with Alicia, and either we sued her or she sued us, the prevailing party would get attorney fees, um, and that doesn't work in our favor. And I can explain more why. Okay. If I said it not, that's great. <laughs> sure. Um, why are we um, supplying her with a retainer now when we're not before? Uh, it's to provide a, a more consistent uh, work effort uh, and also to assist uh, her in cash flow uh, matters. We've exceeded that $1,500 in those months the last year. So did the committee uh, review what we paid her and what we received for those services and how many hours? Because that's a lot of hours. They didn't go into uh, that detail, but we were happy to provide it. I mean, there was a, a considerable amount of discussion about the uh, retainer. Uh, that the yeah, because I'm concerned that we're, I don't see what we're using her for. So I mean, I know she does the newsletter, right? She and does. she's done a couple of press releases, right? But I haven't really seen much else for fifteen hundred dollars a month or for thirty hours. Uh, it's at 30 hours a month. Right. It's not to exceed 30 hours a month. For so, so what I'm asking is, do the committee review that? We didn't, uh, the staff did not provide the committee with uh, an hourly time sheet for the uh, uh, former contract in my hours that she had been destroyed. We provided them with some money justification that they could see we just gave them a verbal report. What we did, yeah, sure. What we did discuss, Shelley, is that um, over the past year we've been a whole lot more proactive in getting good articles out about our agency and what we're doing, and we wanted to continue that uh, and continue with at every meeting looking at what articles can be produced that will shed the best light on our agency and let the public know <coughs> what we're doing. Uh, certainly the newsletter was something that we all agreed was something very positive for the agency. And with the new retainer, it, what we're hoping for, and I think we will get, is more positive articles on a proactive basis that we can uh, provide more information to the community. And I think all three of us felt that was a very good idea and that that 
this uh, was a step in the right direction to do that. Why would a retainer um, motivate her to do that? Well, it's not the retainer that would be the motivation. It's that uh, in, in the relationship here right now, it would be show that we would consistently be having her as someone who is providing a lot of our public relations articles out to the public. She's done that in the past, and this would continue that. So that was our thoughts. There was also the understanding that uh, this would help to compensate her for some of the meetings that she attends in order to get the background information that's necessary for some of the, uh, some of the articles that we can come The other positive thing about Alicia is that she has a whole history of you know, over a decade or more, probably two decades of history on water and what's been going on in the valley. For us to go out and get someone new or even expect somebody to understand the intricacies of water would almost be impossible. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not questioning at all her ability and her background and, and, and that she is an asset for us and getting articles out and such. I just am concerned when we I have um, consultants, and then we put them on retainers, and then they become more permanent, you might say, which could be viewed as a good thing, or, you know, I mean, it could be viewed as a, as a good thing. I just, I just haven't seen what we've, what we've received for $1,500, so I guess that's part of my question. But if the committee's reviewed it and it feels as though, um, we have, then uh, I guess um, that'll be fine with me. Thank you. Oh, I, I, I thought there was supposed to have been a quarterly newsletter done by her for all the employees every, every three months. Is, is that being done? Yes. 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 Okay. And what else? Well, she writes, uh, she's written uh, several articles uh, for us over the summer period. And uh, uh, I, that's what I can come up off uh, the top of my head. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, I mean, I think uh, I have no problem with I, I personally have no problem myself approving what's here, but I'd like to see an itemized list of everything she did in, uh, since her last contract in writing so we can, um, you know, all of the work and evaluate what, what, what's been done instead of talking because just like your general manager don't recall right. all the stuff so I, I think it'd be prudent that we get a list of information and at a later time but I I think we should go forward with, with this and and because we don't want to hold back any newsletters or anything like that at this time so yeah and and, 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 and another thing for staff and management is maybe you're not using it enough to get more stuff out that should be approved by the president that can share light to our constituents and the people in our district what is going on with the agency. So maybe that's another thing we should be doing. That's good advice. And, and I, I don't recall all the products that Alicia has produced, but I, I do appreciate the, the press release she performed for geopurification. It was very well written, very well received. And with that, can I, do we have a motion yet, or I will move approval of board order six? Mm -hmm. I'll second. Do you have a motion and a second? Have a, any questions or discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. <laughs> and you know what I could do um, is, first of please, all. Please, please come up to the. Watch your you come up to the podium. When I submit my invoices, they are itemized line by line by line, all my invoices, so I could um, supply copies, I guess. We, we have copies of those. We'll we put so to the, and then also, I'm always willing to do more work. I do what's assigned to me. Uh, Alicia, one thing so, the committee did talk about when we uh, uh, sent contract forward to the board was you, you go to so many meetings and your knowledge of water is unparalleled in the valley as far as serving as a reporter and what we 
had recommended is that you know, you're going to these meetings and you, as a reporter, you see things that could be real positive that we may not quite understand. So uh, working you know, with staff on taking the initiative to say, hey, that would be a great article that I okay. put out as a press release. <coughs> yeah, and and that's think, something we yeah. would appreciate. I mean, for the most part, I have been waiting for assignments that come to me, but I could generate. Well, or, or at least to whoever your point person is here, make recommendations on things that you think, well, that would be something the community needs to know and right. you can do. And I know you go to other meetings too. You go to the water master meeting, and you go to the yeah. state contractors meeting, and, and right. there's all kinds of things that we're doing in those meetings that really, I think, could be helpful for the public okay. to the to know. So maybe yeah. being a little proactive with whoever you're working with here to say, hey, that'd be a great article. All right. Okay. That would be fun. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item 6C, Water Bank Resources Committee. Committee Chairman Todd. Uh, uh, yes. Um, so on um, status and updates, last meeting, the ad hoc, uh, do we have anything to discuss on that meeting? Uh, just the uh, just the items under uh, just the items underneath that particular item having to do with Rio Bravo and Calandria. Uh, Please, we have specific action items there, but we will be uh, discussing some other items in close session later. That's yeah, so okay. And then uh, consideration of possible action. Um, that's the same thing with the term sheet, right? We're going to go with that. Correct. Too. We're going to, so both these items are going to be put into closed session. I, actually, both these items are in public session. Okay. These these are these are public items. So. <laughs> so I'm reports done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We we uh, uh, I have a little PowerPoint for the rest of, uh, for the board on the Rio Bravo exchange agreement, and so we can uh, take a look at that now. Um, this is. Uh, is this is the terms for the Rio Bravo, R Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District uh, and uh, uh, the Antelope Valley East River Water Agency. Um, what the project is, is uh, in 2019, ABEC will transfer Table A to Rosedale Rio Bravo at 16,000 acre feet on a 2 to 1 basis. Um, uh, and then before, um, December 31st on 2024, Rosedale Rio Bravo will return back to ABIC 5,333 feet uh, to ABIC on our request. Uh, so you can see the little diagram shows that we're providing 16,000 acre feet to them and they're responding back at 5,333 acre feet. If uh, the board will remember last year, we, we uh, looked at a uh, uh, common landowner transfer with uh, five lines. Uh, that project ran into some uh, difficulties uh, with DWR, and this is the replacement project for that that meets the DWR uh, requirements. So, uh, from the financial impact, um, Rosedale Rio Bravo will uh, uh, provide us with three hundred acre, uh, three hundred dollars per acre foot for the sixteen thousand uh, acre feet. Um, and then if uh, for the revenue before a re reservoir before we have an opportunity to deliver that uh, 2019 water, then they'll pay us three hundred dollars for that. So it kind of gives us a little hedge against bills. Uh, then we have to uh, pay back uh, three hundred and twenty-five dollars an acre foot back to Rosedale Rio Bravo because they have. Uh, Twenty-five dollars worth of uh, local expenses associated with uh, returning that water back to the aqueduct. So, uh, basically, how it works is you can see from the diagram here the revenue that the agency would receive from uh, uh, Rosedale River Bravo is four million eight hundred thousand uh, dollars if we return the water uh, back to them at three hundred twenty-five dollars an acre. But that's 1.7, which you have to take from that. It, it nets us uh, a little over $3 million in revenue uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, and the point of delivery for this is the needle four bay in the picture that indicates there the exact what the O'Neill four bay is. Um, in this uh, 
this type of exchange is, uh, meets our strategic plan goals and objectives. Uh, goal two, water reliability. And goal number four, financial integrity. That concludes the staff report. Uh, uh, with the, if, if uh, the board should choose to approve the term sheet, uh, staff will draft up an agreement for DWR execution between us and uh, Rosedale Lake Power. I have a question. Sure. We're paying a little more when we send the water to them. Is that because it's starting to up here? Well, it's uh, once uh, they have some local costs, once the water gets into Rio Bravo, there's a cross canal, or cross canal uh, expense and uh, some other expenses that uh, Prince County, uh, that have incurred for Kirk County. So they're recovering their costs, essentially. So there's no additional amount. They're just covering the cost of the water that they paid initially, plus whatever their out-of-pocket costs are, to get it back to the canal to us. So is this 2018 water or 2019 water? It's, uh, it has to be 2019 water. It will be 2019 water. However, we have 16,000 acre feet of 2018 water, which we will be delivered in 2019. So don't worry about the molecules. But just, uh, <laughs> we're uh, we're, we're uh, having the organization, uh, we're having the, the language meet with the requirements that you get the car and ask for transfers. And how long do we expect this to take? Um, they're, they're, they'll, they'll be pretty quick on this because we've had a lot of discussion with them with regards to this, so I suspect about 30 minutes or so. And they'll, they'll, uh, they'll, we'll start delivering as soon as we get here. Do I have a motion? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Okay. Um, item uh, C. C C three. Consideration of possible action to term sheet for Calamity Farms uh, for 2019 property lease. So, yeah. Yes, I'll uh, turn this over to Assistant General Manager Matt Hinson to provide this term. All right. Thank you, Wayne. Good evening. Uh, could you advance the slide there, Dwayne? I would be happy. Or, oh, you got it. Yeah. Okay. So what this is, uh, this is a, a proposed lease uh, between ABAC and Calandry Farms Incorporated for the lease of about 120 acres of land that is currently owned by Canal Valley Eastern Water Agency. I uh, included a packet of staff report and a proposed term sheet for this project or this uh, lease. Um, the property is located in Kern County. Uh, just north of Avenue A, there's an exhibit up on screen that, that highlights the subject property in blue. So the 300 acres of land that we own currently, but Clanbury is requesting to only lease 120 acres of that property on the northern end of the property, between uh, Gaskell and north of Elder Avenue, and then between 60th Street West and 65th Street West. Next slide, please. So the basic terms of the lease, as I mentioned, 120 acres. Um, it's only for 2019 between January 1st, and uh, they'd be off property by November 30th, 2019. Uh, they are requesting to utilize three of ABAC's existing ag wells, wells C6, 7, and 12, which are currently not utilized or anticipated to be utilized by ABAC. Um, Landry would be responsible for all operation maintenance of those wells, any repairs, um, as well as the metering requirements to comply with the Anal Valley Water Master. They would uh, be utilizing their own groundwater production rights, so they wouldn't be utilizing any of ABEX water, um, all of which would be reported to the Anal Valley Water Master, and that responsibility would be by Landry Farm. Um, and then obviously they would restore the property to its original condition by the end of the lease. Um, I have a question for that. Okay. Which one next? I'll go back. Uh, two things. Uh, one, there's got to be provision there that he cannot sublease the land. Okay. okay, that's one. And the uh, second thing is that our approval, if 
approvals tonight, it's also going to be contingent upon, the most should be contingent upon the water master approving the meter request. The meter request and the extraction of groundwater. Well, I meant the water meter, I mean, yeah, exactly. But, but the big thing is you can't sublease it. Yeah. Okay. And also I should point out that this property here is under the S power lease option. Which that lease option runs through November of 2019. Um, we have reached out to S Power just to make sure that us leasing this plan to Clanbury won't interfere with that lease option. So there would be language in our lease agreement with Clanbury that, and S Power would sign off on it, saying that they're they're okay with us doing this and it's not going to impact that lease option. Okay. So S Power did say it was okay. Correct. I got something in writing. What's on that property as we speak? Who's on it? Is it old old farm ground or what? Yeah, it's, it's vacant right now. I believe it's old Calandry farm property. It's, it's on it's a Mediterranean. Oh, in Alfalfa. Oh, yeah, in, in, Al, in Alfalfa previously. Oh, it was in Alfalfa? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So it wasn't Calandry then? No, it's Mediterranean. Uh, it's it was about like eight years, years ago? Yeah, it's about four or five years ago. Oh, five, four, five. Time flies. Next slide, uh, So they're proposing to lease the property for $100 per acre. So based on the acreage, it'd be revenue to the agency in the amount of $12,000. And we would have no expenses involved in this. I, I move on order 6C3 that we approve the um, approved term sheet with Clamby Farms for 2019 and to involve provision that uh, contingent upon them getting approval with the meter from and the transfer of water rights from the water master. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? I just have a comment. We've leased um, uh, other property in a similar manner for uh, less money than this, correct? That's my understanding, yes. Probably more also, but yeah. this is right in line with what we've done in the past. Yeah, my understanding is in the ballpark. In the ballpark. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Any more questions or discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That's approved. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. Item 7A, general manager's report. When? Thank you. Um, Board President Dias, members of the board, the general manager's report for uh, September 18, 2018. Um, you can see the 10 day forecast for uh, some some rain, about uh, inch and a quarter inches is expected over the Feather River Basin by midweek. So we'll see how that uh, uh, comes along. Uh, here's our uh, uh, rainfall diagram, and you can see the averages. And where we are, so uh, good news is that uh, November kind of reached its uh, average number, which is uh, a good thing. You can see by the yellow uh, by the yellow bar there and the blue line, which shows uh, what average is. So while we were a little below average in October, we we're in pretty good shape here, but we're starting off pretty slowly uh, here in December, hoping for some good uh, rains in the next couple of weeks to get another uh, wet cycle, uh, which usually the last two or three weeks. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, from reservoir conditions, things that are looking pretty good with the exception of Warville. Warville has uh, been moved uh, uh, lower on purpose in order to uh, uh, move some water out to get ready for the uh, upcoming rainy season. And this is a graph that uh, indicates that. Um, so it's got approximately one million, uh, uh, one million acre feet, about 28 percent of its capacity. So. And uh, you can see we're right about average, uh, or better for uh, uh, for the uh, San Luis Reservoir, which is. Uh, Lends itself pretty well because getting water south of the delta is the most important aspect. And you can see we're right about average uh, at the beginning of the season. Uh, believe it or not, it's sometimes more difficult to get water across the delta in the winter than it is in the fall. 
So, uh, you know, this is, this is uh, relatively good news for, for moving water south. Um, we had initial uh, allocation of 10%. Um, we had a little more snowpack than they thought. Um, <coughs> and that 10% uh, doesn't reflect um, the, the water that uh, came in November. So uh, we're looking at uh, uh, we're looking at some some additional uh, water likely uh, as we go into January. So uh, locally, uh, we're serving about uh, 20, uh, 23 million gallons a day, uh, which is equivalent to 82 acre feet a day. Uh, you can see that's a little, almost five million gallons a day greater than it was last year at this time. So we uh, get down into the numbers and uh, our conventional treatment plant, uh, we're at uh, 16.1 million gallons a day. Uh, most of that coming from the Quartz Hill plant. Um, and last year we were at 13.9. You look at the uh, uh, water banking geoperification treatment process, we're at 7.3 million gallons a day versus 4.3 last year. Most of that water is coming from the West Side Water Bank. Uh, and uh, you can see that's a little bit higher also. And I think you're gonna, uh, when we get all the numbers tallied for 2018, I think you'll see that, uh, um, that there was a lot more water consumed uh, in 18 as opposed to 17. Also, uh, um, you know, our recharge and storage, uh, you can see we're uh, doing, uh, doing uh, a little bit of uh, restart, charge and storage on the uh, east side water bank only. So, uh, water quality wise, uh, uh, we got our PHM results from November and all of our compliance sa uh, samples and uh, uh, we were well below our internal gold of uh, 30, uh, uh, the 64 micrograms per liter. Um, mo more importantly, our bromide is stabilized uh, in the raw water, which is uh, really important for our water quality component. And our uh, total organic carbon has also decreased, uh, making it a lot easier. Also, um, wanted to mention that the uh, 2018 algal al, al I can't pronounce words today. Al can anybody help me? Al 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 algal algal <laughs> toxin testing. Um, but for the third year in a row, we uh, didn't receive any detection, which is uh, fairly important. Uh, because that has been a uh, problem in, in other systems, uh, not in the AVEX system. Uh, status and updates, uh, there's Gabby lunch on Thursday at 11 o'clock. Um, Catherine uh, Barton will be uh, providing the Oath of Office on uh, January 8th. Uh, for uh, our directors, uh, we have a good, uh, second Cadiz tour on January 10th. NWRA Leadership Forum in Phoenix, Arizona on uh, uh, the 10th of uh, January. Uh, and uh, my schedule, um, I'm going to be uh, out of the office on January 2nd through 4th. Otherwise, I will be uh, in the office through the uh, Christmas holiday season. I will be uh, attending the State Water Contractor meetings beginning tomorrow and Thursday. I'm back on uh, Thursday evening. So that concludes uh, uh, the general manager's report. We have to answer any questions that you may have. I have a question. On Coral Bill, is that an uh, annual thing they do before the water season? Yes, and uh, they're uh, under, they're working under some new interim uh, uh, dam operation. I don't mean that in a bad term. <laughs> <laughs> Operation and uh, um, uh, criteria from the Corps of Engineers, and they so they're a little bit lower than they have been in the past. Okay. Any more questions for Wayne? Thank you. Thank you. I have made director's reports. Rob? No report. Martin? No. Shelley? No. Frank? No. Justin? Nothing. Jerry? No. I don't know. I have nine attorneys. Bill. No. No report. Okay. Item 10, closed session. What items will be going to closed session? Uh, 
We're going to go to a closed session on this item B, E, F, and G. G? Yes, is that's, uh, G is a supplemental item. Oh, uh, that that came on the top. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I'm going to close that. Second. Second. <coughs> Favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll go into closed session in five minutes.